This is Diary of Brother, found over on the LLB archive on r slash loaded diaper. Tuesday. Went to the attic earlier today. I was looking for some things I could punt off for a little cash that mom would have missed too bad. Found a picture of Greg from right before he went to college. It has to be from that party when that Kinney guy sold his millionth book. He kept saying he couldn't have done it without Greg. Greg seemed so happy that day. I took it to Perry's Pond and sold it for 15 bucks. Gonna get some smokes and whiskey. Friday. Bail wouldn't start, so I had to walk to the LD show tonight. Fuel filter's probably clogged again. I'll check it out tomorrow. This one guy stopped me outside the bar and kept asking me about Greg's books. Pretty sure he thought I was Greg. After a while, I just walked away. Still pissed off that I spent years teaching Greg how to draw like that. And he wouldn't give me a cut of the money. What a As soon as I got home, Dad started talking to me again about finding my own place. He's been talking about that for a couple months though, so I'll be fine. I was still thinking about Greg when I got back. Thought messing with Manny with some would clear my head, but it's just not the same anymore. Saturday. The van's fuel filter was fine. Think the starter might be busted. Went to the auto store and picked another one up. Spent most of the day with Blake. She didn't have any brothers, so even though Greg is a hometown hero, I'm always explaining all the bullshit around his books. She agrees that I'm definitely smart enough to have rotten, uh, written books like Greg. After a while, we ended up rolling a joint watching TV. Blake fell asleep on the couch around midnight. I love Blake so much. Every now and then I think about what she'd say if I asked her to marry me. Sunday. F*** my life. No, really, f*** me. Uh, tonight at dinner, Mom said she talked to Greg, and he's going to spend the summer here in Plainville. I think Dad was excited. He's been cleaning up the guest room non-stop since he got the news. I think he feels bad for giving Greg's room to Manny. Probably thinks sleeping in the guest room for a couple months will make Greggy dearest want to move back home. Personally, I'm going to try to camp out at Blake's house for most of the summer. I don't need Greg jerking himself over how great he can write books. I swear to God, if I ever say the name Jeff Kinney one time, I'm going to strangle him. Wednesday. Wednesday means another show at the Depot Bar. I keep pitching to Bill that we go back to calling ourselves Loaded Diaper instead of just LD. Think it's getting to his head. Had a couple beers with Bill and his wife until Blake showed up. She was telling me about some patience he had while we were loading up my drums. But then someone came up to us in the parking lot. Well shit. Guess I wasn't paying attention to what mom said what day Greg was getting back. Found out that he needed to go to the house first. He came out to the Depot just to see me. Figures he'd be back in Plainville for 5 minutes. And he was flaunting his book money by wasting gas. Him and Blink ended up talking for like 10 minutes until she got a call from her Mimi, so she had to leave. Which meant I had to ride home with golden boy Greg. Thought Manny would lose his mind when Greg got home, but that didn't pan out. I should have known Manny would side with him. They're two peas in a pod. Saturday. Greg's been home for three days and my life has never been worse. He's already taken Manny out for ice cream, gone clothes shopping with mom, and spent time with Riley. I swear to god, I saw him and dad playing catch in the yard. What a f***ing suck up. Most of the time, I'm trying to lay low. Blake's Mimi had another episode, so getting over there is a non-option. I watch TV after dinner, but Greg is always telling mom and dad about some dumb college adventure. I think it was the college talk that finally made me snap. I don't know why I said what I said next. It, it wasn't even that clever of a comeback, but I just had to get a word in somewhere. That was when we really started to get into it with each other. Save us all some time? What's that supposed to mean? It means, well, the rest of us bust our get by, you just struck off onto your diary and sell it back to your family. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I can talk to Jeff, and maybe he can set you up somewhere in- Why don't you and your boyfriend Jeff f*** off back to your publisher and write another book together? My boyfriend? Jesus, Roger, grow up! Just say you're jealous and move on! Move on to where? Go to Kellars with you, so we share a dorm together, and go to class together, and have- We both know you just hate me because I made it out of Plainville, and you never left! I don't know what I expected Greg to say, but it wasn't that. He started to apologize when he realized what he said, but I was already out the door. I just needed to get out of that house. Except the god band still wouldn't start. i have been trying to fix this thing for a week, and I really needed to work. As I'm sitting in front of my van, grease and tears on my face, Manny steps out and says, God damn it, god damn it! I'm the stupidest mother alive! I siphoned some gas out of Dad's car and drove off. I ended up at Lake Mitchell, right on the edge of town. I ended up at Lake Mitchell, right on the edge of town. Greg was right. Even when I ran away from him, I still couldn't make it out of plain view. I had a little bit of cigarette, but it didn't change anything. I sat on the hood of my van for a while, just kind of thinking, until I heard someone else pull into the parking lot. It was Greg. Mom must have told him to come find me, but he just said he wanted to talk some. We talked about how Greg almost lost his scholarship, me wanting to propose to Blake, how he grew up, what kind of people he wanted to be. That was when I spoke my piece. You were right, I think, about me never getting out of Plainville. For most of my life, I've been trying to get out of this town. Then mom sends one of your old diaries to her author friend, and then you just 
you find this golden ticket out. I don't hate you, Greg. I'm jealous. You got a perfect chance to go make something of yourself, and you took it. How many chances have I been given? And I just didn't realize I'd been given them. How many more chances do I get, you know? Sometimes, I think about how my life ended up. You, Manny, Mom and Dad, even Blake and my band. I've kind of always thought they were holding me back. Like, I'm this huge sunflower and you're all weeds, choking me out and blocking my sun. But now, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm the weed. Maybe I'm the only one holding me back. Wow. Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. For years, I wanted to put as much distance between us as I could. Now that I have it, I just want to hang out with you. Two months later. Thursday. Well, I guess it's official. I sold the van today. Didn't get as much as I was hoping for it, but it's enough to pay for some classes at Plainville Community College. Greg gave me the Kinney's number. And he said that if I get my GED, he would pay for half my tuition. I can't lie, I definitely started crying. I can't think of another time someone showed that they believed in me like that. Blake helped me pick out an apartment closer to school. It's small and cramped, but it's mine. I told Dad about me and Blake looking at places, and he seemed so happy for me. We talked for a bit, but then he went to the attic to get something. It was Mom's engagement ring. I knew that's what it was because I tried to pawn it so many times that Mom gave it to Dad for safekeeping. I tried to protest, but Dad kept saying he'd take the heat. I'm still at a loss for words. Greg had her home today. Honestly, I miss him a little. It's kind of funny. I'd spent so long pitying myself, blaming all my problems on Greg. I never really thought about the future. I guess I never really thought that I had a future. Like, I'm about to go to college in a few months, and I don't even know what degree I'm gonna get. As I was packing up my room to move, I found a trifold poster folded up on my bed with a letter on top. At first, I was confused. Then I opened up the poster board. Then, I just laughed. 